Hey everybody, Hobby Farm Guys here. I'm Steve. I'm Brian, and joining us behind the scenes as always is our friend Eric. Hey there. In today's video, we're going to show you a little bit of a magic trick. How to turn one bee colony into two. We'll not only show you how, but we'll explain why and when you'll want to do this as well. Let's do it. In recent years, honeybees are becoming ever more popular for small-scale do-it-yourselfers. And why wouldn't they be? Having your own bees helps ensure good pollination for your crops and orchards, but not only that, bees produce many other products that are both useful and marketable. There are several reasons why you may want to split your hive. Often, it's simply to increase the number of hives you keep, or you may be making nucleus colonies to keep backup queens or to sell. Splits are often used as a method of swarm control as well. Now typically uh, splits are done in the spring, once the bees begin building the population and ample forage is available. You can make splits later on, in fact it's possible to split your hive multiple times during the year. But keep in mind, each time you split, you're cutting the size and hence the workforce and resources of the colony. It takes time then for those bees to build the numbers back up and they need to be able to have enough time to forage and store enough to make it through the winter. So for most of us, a spring split will be all we need or, or want to do. So how do you split a hive? Well, you may have heard the old adage that if you ask one question to two beekeepers, you're going to get three answers. And that definitely applies here. There are lots of ideas and methods for splitting beehives. We're going to show you one of the easiest methods that's out there, the walkaway split. Splitting a hive turns one hive into two. Yeah, but while you can split up and divide frames and bees, you can't split the queen. So, uh, so you're going to end up needing to add a queen to the mix. Now you can buy a mated queen, get a queen cell from a buddy, or you can simply allow the bees to handle that all on their own. With the walkaway split, that's the route we're going to go. We're going to let the bees take care of getting a new queen. In fact, it's so easy, we don't even have to find the old queen. Yeah, you don't have to find the queen, but you do need to find eggs. So every fertilized egg the queen lays has the potential to become a new queen. Eggs hatch in about three days and are fed a diet of royal jelly. However, after a couple of days, the diet is changed from royal jelly to a mixture of pollen and nectar, unless the larva is destined to become royalty. Queens are fed royal jelly throughout their entire larval stage, allowing them to fully develop and become a queen. That means that when you make that split, those bees have a limited window of time in which to raise a new queen. Having a supply of eggs maximizes that time frame and provides them with plenty of options. So you need to ensure that the colony you want to raise a queen has a good supply of eggs. If you find the queen, great. Just make sure you have eggs in the other hive. But again, you don't even have to find her. Just make sure there's eggs in both hives. Yeah, you should also split the capped and uncapped brood as well as honey and pollen stores between the hives. This is going to ensure that both hives have the resources they need. The older foragers are all going to return to the original hive location. So to compensate for that, you can put a few extra bees in the new hive. If you choose to move the new hive a few miles away, you don't need to worry about that though. The other thing to consider here uh, when you're going to allow the bees to raise their own queen is that it has to be late enough in the spring that there are adequate numbers of drones to ensure that she's properly mated. Bees won't carry drones through the winter, and they won't start producing them until the resources coming in convince them that they can support drones. An early spring split will often result in an unmated or poorly mated queen due to the lack of drones. So check your own hive to get an idea about drone populations. If you're going to split your hive, it should be healthy, and a healthy hive will maintain a population of drones. If you don't have drones, it's likely too early to count on a reliably mated queen from a walkaway split. It really is that simple. Basically, you divide the hive in two, Ensuring both halves contain eggs and adequate amounts of brood, nectar, and pollen, then walk away. Wait five or six days and then check on the hives. You should find queen cells in one of them. Now that's the one that's going to raise a new queen. If you don't find queen cells in either hive, the split was unsuccessful and you're going to need to either introduce a mated queen to the new hive or recombine them. To know which hive has the queen, you can either find her or just locate eggs. By waiting five to six days, all the eggs in the queenless hive will have hatched. So if you see queen cells, you know that they're on their way to make a new, 
uh, to making a new queen. It takes 16 days for a queen to emerge. Now, depending upon the egg or larva uh, selected by the bees on the day you made the split, that could have, you know, you could be at this point anywhere from day one to about day six. Uh, you've waited five or six days to check, so now you're in the six to 12 day range. So once she emerges, she's gonna take some orientation and mating flights over a few days. The point being, once you find the queen cell, you still have a couple more weeks before you're gonna have a laying queen. My experience has been better when I've left them alone during that time, despite my overwhelming curiosity, right, to get in there and snoop around. Give them a couple weeks to get her hatched, mated and established, and then go peek. Now, if after a couple of weeks you don't see signs of her, it's possible she was either killed fighting other potential queens if there were multiple queen cells, or she may have perished on a mating flight. Uh, in this case, you're going to need to introduce a mated queen or recombine the hives back together again. You can try providing the queenless hive another frame of eggs, but keep in mind a lot of time has passed and the clock is ticking. So there you have it, the walk-away split. A super easy and inexpensive way to turn one colony into two. Let us know what you think and share what's worked for you in the comments below. Hey guys, what do you call a hive that has no exits? Unbelievable. <laughs> Bye. Bye.